Hi, everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all new 2024 16 inch MacBook Pro. I thought we'd unbox it, see how it's a little bit different than last year, and compare it with the M1 Max and M3 Max variants compared to this one, since this is the M4 Max. This comes in at $24.99, goes up to $7,349, and is available in space black or silver. This is actually the very top of the line M4 Max, meaning it has 128 gigs of RAM and 8 terabytes of storage. It's an M4 Max with a 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, and 16 core neural engine. So let's go ahead and unbox it. It also has the nano texture display, so we'll compare that as well, and Thunderbolt 5. So let's open it up. We'll flip it over here. They didn't change the wallpaper on the box this year. And here is the MacBook itself. And included within the box here, let's see what we've got. So we've got our typical literature, of course. Let's see if we've got everything out of there. Looks like we do. So we get a cleaning cloth since it has a nano texture display. So it's got a little apple in the bottom right hand corner, which is nice that they included that. And then it says MacBook Pro, just a quick start guide, I believe. Like that. And then it has our little warranty information. And then it says cleaning the nano texture display. It says clean your MacBook Pro display only with the included polishing cloth for infrequent cleaning of hard to remove smudges. A 70% isopropyl alcohol solution may be used. Do not spray the solution directly on the display. So that's something you don't see in most of them. Let's go ahead and set that aside. Now, when it comes to the power adapter, let's go ahead and take this out of the box here. This is included with it. There we go. And you can see on the bottom, this is 140 Watts. So, it's the very top power adapter, which is nice. That's included. And then of course we have a braided cable, which is USB-C to MagSafe. So that's included with it. Nice braided cable as well. Let me set the box aside and take a closer look at the Mac. So here is the Mac itself. Peel back the bottom cover here. And on the back, it says MacBook Pro, and you can see it has some screws around the outside edge, really no different than what we had before. On the right-hand side, we've got our HDMI adapter, Thunderbolt 5 or USB-C, and an SD card reader. If we go around the front, we've got our little indent to open the display. We've got our MagSafe adapter, two more USB-C or Thunderbolt 5 ports, as well as a headphone jack or audio port. Let me get rid of the packaging here. And this is the space black color. And compared to last year's model, the M3 Max, it's basically the same. So this is the M3 Max, M4 Max on the right. And they look basically the same as far as the colors. Very similar. Maybe the last year's model is slightly darker, but for the most part, they're very similar. And let's go ahead and open this up. So we'll open it up just like that. It boots up on its own. And there we have the nano texture display. So if we bring this back here, you can see there's almost no reflections in it whatsoever. And it actually has my fingerprint on it. So we can just use this to get rid of that. There we go. So what I'll do is probably get this set up. I'm going to copy everything over from the M3 Max so we have an identical pair here, and then we can actually get everything set up identically and run the same tests. But you can see what it looks like, and it's really blocking a lot of those reflections. So if we go to this next page here, this looks great. This is actually gonna be great for me to use outside as I like to edit sometimes on the porch, things like that. And sometimes it's just a little bit too bright. Another thing is this will stay at 1000 nits of brightness instead of having to use some other program to bump that up. So just regular SDR brightness up to 1000 nits and then 1600 for HDR content. So just to run through a quick setup on this before I get to transferring, we'll select our country, the United States, I don't need accessibility features, but if you do, you can set them up here. 
Then we'll connect to Wi-Fi. Now it tells us about data and privacy. We'll click continue. And at this point we can migrate directly from another Mac or windows computer. I'm going to copy everything from another Mac to this Mac, like I said, with a Thunderbolt cable. So I've got my Thunderbolt cable connected. Let me go ahead and click continue and it says connect to AC power. So let me do that quickly. I actually have a cable right next to it. So we'll just plug it in here. and it says transfer information to this Mac. So we'll go back just a second here. We'll connect and I will have to go into migration assistant on this device. We'll click continue for migration assistant, put in my password. It will take just a second and then it will show up on this device. We'll select to another Mac and then click continue. And this Mac is running Mac OS 15.1 and you'll see it showed up on the Mac on the right. So the M3 Mac 16, we're going to turn that into the M4 Mac 16. We'll click continue. We'll put in a code or verify it. And then it's going to start to transfer everything. So this will take a little while. It's looking for applications and documents to transfer. And once it's ready to do that, it will move everything over. Now everything's transferred over. I had to sign back in with my Apple ID password. Now we'll click continue on file vault disk encryption. Then we'll set up touch ID. So we'll get this set up. And once touch ID is set up, we should be able to get to the desktop pretty quickly here and see how these compare. So we'll click continue. Then we could set up Apple pay. We'll set it up later. And now it says, welcome to Mac. So we'll give it a second to load here. Now everything's set up. We're on the desktop with the exact same wallpaper. Everything's identical from computer to computer. M3 Max on the left, M4 Max on the right. Now, just to compare the nano texture display on the left is the regular display on the right is the nano texture display. Some people were concerned about it degrading the overall quality. And I think at this distance, it looks phenomenal. It just doesn't have a reflection. If I bring in my iPhone and maybe turn on the flashlight here. So here's my iPhone. You can see the reflection a little bit on this screen here. If I move it over here, you'll see it sort of is a little bit different. It flares out. But again, if I bring it back, it sort of hides that reflection, but you can't see the reflection of the device at all. So the reflections in the display on the right are just greatly redu reduced, basically like the one on the iPad or the studio display. But I would say there's something different a little bit as this looks better than a studio display. In fact, when I was in the store looking at the iMacs and the MacBook Pro, I had to stop for a moment to decide which one actually had the nano texture display. So I think it looks great. Now, first of all, let's test the camera as the camera's actually been upgraded to 12 megapixels. So let's go ahead and test that out, see what it's like and then we'll run some benchmarks. If you wanna jump ahead, be sure to check the description for all of the different tests. Now I have both of them on maximum settings. Let's go ahead and click record. Now, both of these should look very similar. They're both 1080p. However, the new one, the M4 Max, actually has a 12 megapixel camera. It should be a little bit better and also supports center stage. We can also, of course, change the background, but we can enable center stage and then it centers me automatically. So that's something that's a little bit new that we don't get on the old one. Of course, we can also enable a background here. We've got studio lighting options, portrait mode and things like that. But this gives you an idea of what it looks like and sounds like. And to me, based on these screens, it really doesn't look much different. Basically looks the same, but we've now got center stage. So I wish they would have bumped this to 4K now that we have 12 megapixels, but either way, it's fine probably for Zoom calls or FaceTime calls and other things. But let me know which one you think looks best in the comments below. Now we're set up and ready to go. We have the M1 Max 16 inch with 64 gigs of RAM and four terabytes of storage. Then in the middle, the M3 Max with 128 gigs of RAM and eight terabytes of storage. And then the same is true for the M4 Max, 128 gigs of RAM and eight terabytes of storage. So they're all set up, ready to go. Every one of them has 100% battery charge. So they're not on the charger now, but we're all at hundred percent on each one of them to start all of these tests. And another thing to know is the wallpaper is set up for the era of the computer M1, M3. And while Apple didn't technically change it in the OS, they did show it in some of their promo material. And this is sort of the new style. And this was posted by basic Apple guy. So I'll link that in the description. So that helps you differentiate, which is which let's start off simple with Geekbench. Also, one thing to note, we're on Mac OS 14.1 and then 15.1 on the newer Macs. So let's go ahead and run this. 
and see what we get. Benchmarks completed, and as you can see, it's basically the order we would expect. 2,404 for single core on the M1 Max, 3,231 for single core on the M3 Max, and 4,027 for single core on the M4 Max. When it comes to multi-core, it's a similar story. 12,672 on the M1 Max. The M3 Max is 21,495, with the M4 Max coming in at 25,853. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this and we'll run a GPU benchmark as well. We'll use metal for this one. And with the GPU benchmarks on the M1 Max, we have 119,014 on the M3 Max, 163,482 and on the M4 Max, 190,305. Let's move on to a quick disk speed test as well. So let's go ahead and press start on all of them and see what we've got. I just opened the program and starts right away. And the specs on the M4 Max are incredible as far as the initial. We're over 8,358 megabytes a second write speed and about 5,667 megabytes per second read speed. On the M3 Max, again, we're around 8,000 write speed, around 5,500 to 6,000 read speed. And it's a little bit slower for write speed on the M1 Max at about 6,000 write speed, 5,500 read speed. So all are very similar just with the write speed being a little bit faster on the eight terabyte models. That probably contributes to that a little bit. Now we have Cinebench R23. Let's go ahead and start the CPU test. I'm starting to hear the fans spin up for the first time. So we'll take a listen to that once they hit full speed. And with the decibel level from the Apple Watch, we're at around 53 decibels or so. So that might be full speed, about 53 decibels or so. Not very loud, but it's the only one making that much noise where the M1 Max doesn't even seem to be spinning up the fans yet at this point. When it comes to the overall thermals, all of them have sort of similar heat signatures where you have two fan outlets here with some heat building up around the processor below. At the hottest point, this says we're at about 47 degrees Celsius right on the display, but on the, the laptop itself, it's definitely warm, but nothing like the Intel ones from the past. As far as the middle here, the M3 Max, again, same sort of heat signature. And we're at around the hottest point, around 44 degrees Celsius, I think I saw, 44 and a half degrees Celsius. And then on the M1 Max, it's recalibrating there, same sort of heat signature. And it was at 40.4 before the battery went or died. So in general, it's pretty decent, not super hot compared to the Intel counterparts. So decent overall. Cinebench R23 completed. And on the M1 Max, we have 12,323. On the M3 Max, 23,813. And on the M4 Max, 26,891. That puts it behind a Threadripper. That's the Threadripper 299 at three gigahertz with a 32 core CPU. So that gives you an idea. It's 30,000 for the Threadripper, 26,891 for the M4 Max. So pretty impressive overall. Now I have draw things loaded with the same model flux.1 dev. We have the same description that was just auto loaded into it. And then also we have it set for 20 steps. So we've got the models loaded on each one of them. We're ready to go. Let's go ahead and click generate and see what we get. Again, the fans are spinning up. Let me turn the microphone so you can hear it. So that's about as loud as they get. Not terribly loud, but definitely noticeable. And the M4 Max completed in 133.43 seconds using 20 steps. The M3 Max is almost complete here. And that took 145.92 seconds. And the M1 Max took 189.79 seconds. So definitely a difference as of course you scale up to the M4 Max. Now we have LM Studio loaded and we're going to use the Mistral Nemo Instruct 2407 8 bit model. So let's go ahead and get that loaded up. And I just asked it to create a Swift program to measure iPhone benchmarks. So we'll go ahead and send that and see what each one of these can do. So we'll give it just a moment to complete and see what it's capable of as far as speed. On the M1 Max, we have 23.21 tokens per second, 1,016 tokens, and 1.03 seconds to first token. On the M3 Max, 26.81 tokens per second, 661 tokens, two seconds to first token. And then on the M4 Max, 33.40 tokens per second, 1,544 tokens, 2.16 seconds to first token. 
Now let's take a look at Xcode as many have asked me to test that as well. I ran the Xcode benchmark master that can be found on GitHub and I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out yourself. But on the M1 max, it took 360.922 seconds. The build succeeded and maybe this is because it's on an older version of Mac OS, but it was much faster on the M3 max at 93.285 seconds and on the M4 max 82.964 seconds. So all the same exact download file. This just has an older version on it as far as Mac OS. So that could be a factor here, but I ran it across all of them. Now, when it comes to Final Cut Pro, let's go ahead and try an export test. I have the same movie loaded on all three of them. It's the exact same length, every single clip. And this is my iPhone 15 Pro Max versus 16 Pro Max, which should you choose comparison. It's 17 minutes and 46 seconds long. Let me go ahead and delete all the generated media files, and then we'll see how quick it is to export. The export completed. You can see it on the screen. It's all finished. And with the M1 Max, it came in at five minutes and 13 seconds. The M3 Max, five minutes and 11 seconds. And the M4 Max, four minutes and 35 seconds. So definitely a difference, not so much between the M1 and M3. Now I actually had to run this test multiple times and because I had some issues with plugins, I removed everything off of it and ran the test three times on the M3 Max as I was getting very odd results. Now they're more consistent with all of the different things removed. So you can see that here in the timeline. So you may have noticed some different titles at the beginning. I ran it again, waited for everything to cool down and it seems to be doing just fine. If we close out of these, Let's take a look at battery as the battery life on the new M4 Max should be up to 24 hours. Now, one thing to note is these all started at 100% today and we're now down to 29% on the M1 Max. On the M3 Max, we're at 33% and on the M4 Max, we're at 34%. Now, again, on the M3 Max, I ran that test a few times. So it seems like this may be doing the best battery wise when you're doing heavy tasks. However, I would say it's very slightly different between the M3 Max and M4 Max when it comes to battery. Now, if you're wondering if you should upgrade from an M1 Max to an M4 Max, I think you'll see some significant gains depending on what you're doing. I don't know that the video editing part will be that big of a difference, but if you're doing maybe LLM tasks, neural engine tasks, there's definitely a jump there. The same is true with Xcode coming from M1 to M3 or M4. So hopefully this helps you determine which is best for you. Now, when it comes to Wi-Fi, there's not really any difference here. We still have Wi-Fi 6E. So for whatever reason, Apple decided not to bump it to Wi-Fi 7 like we have on the iPhone. But as far as whether or not you should upgrade, I think for most people, it would be a nice upgrade coming from an M1 product, but I probably would hold off maybe for another year or two if you're on an M2 or later. It just depends on what you have. If it's time to maybe switch different Macs around in your business or in your home, then it might be a nice time to update. But we're seeing significant gains from the M1 to the M4, but I don't know if it's worth, again, upgrading from an M2 Ultra or an M2 Max to an M4 Max unless it's specific workloads. I do really like this nano texture display. It's not for everyone, but I think it's really nice. And at this distance, I think it's perfect. Now, if you're up close to it or it's a little bit further on some of the iMacs and the studio displays, it's not as great. But hopefully that helps you determine which would work best for you. Everything else is pretty much the same. And I don't know that it's worth a giant upgrade cost if you're coming from an M3 Max, but definitely from an earlier device. Let me know what you think of the new M4 Max in the comments below. And if there's anything else you'd like to see tested, maybe in a second video, let me know in the comments below. I'll link the wallpaper that's on this display in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.